you and I decided we were going to take our space and what happened. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August. Into an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, with August, with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, with August, 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 entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement with August, an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement with August. Hi, I'm Demetrius Jordan. I'm an adjunct professor at DePaul University. I'm also a high school teacher uh, at a college prep school in Chicago. I am a once divorced, currently married individual. I've been married this time for 14 years. My name's Becky Sarwate. By day, I work in corporate marketing and communications. By night, I'm a freelance theater critic and sports writer. I am twice divorced and currently married. And in my third and hopefully last and happiest marriage, I've been, uh, it'll be three years this coming Wednesday. My name is Adia Benton. I am an anthropology professor at Northwestern. Um, and <clears throat> I've been, I had to do the math. I've been married for 14 years. Hi, I'm Tiffany Goforth. I am a real estate agent out of Keller Williams. Um, also work in ATM and Smart State Operations. Um, I've been married for seven years and have two children. My name is Miche Ragland and I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I work in research and development as a regulatory affairs specialist. And I've been married now for six years as of May the 5th. We had two weddings, so I had to think about it. <laughs> but our official was uh, May the 5th, uh, so six years. I think that Jada realizes that she probably should not have ever married. So she should have maybe entertained a mental intimate with Will because I do think that they have some sort of good partnership. I see that, I see that energy and that dynamic, but they also, she comes across as if she can't monogamous. That's what I kind of got out of that Red Table talk is that she probably has had more issues with infidelity outside of this August situation. And that that's her. I think there are certain individuals yeah. that have high sexual appetites or require way more attention than, mm -hmm. than just one relationship. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just don't marry if, if, don't that, marry. if the terms of your marriage require monogamy. That, that's what I think. Um, Kevin, you asked the question, how, why be married? Some people right. don't know how to, or don't know how to, in Jada's, and I'm using Jada as a talking point here. I think for their particular relationship, I don't know if they know how to um, separate. I don't know if her and Will can live or live without being life friends with each other. I do think they have a connection. So in my mind, let's stay together and let's be each other's best friend backbone. But you understand that sexually, I may require a few August or whatever she requires or 
<laughs> you know, or sexually, I may require this. Emotionally, I may require that. It may work for them. Me personally, that, that's a bit much. It wouldn't work in my household. But I think for them to answer that question specifically, they understand that, hey, we can be together in this relationship and you require some things that I can't necessarily fulfill and vice versa. I mean, Jada basically told y'all who she was on Arsenio Hall when she first started dating Will Smith. I mean, it was pretty well known apparently uh, by Arsenio Hall's reaction when she said that she was with Will Smith that she liked to, you know, get around, that she liked to, you know, be free with men. And she said, he's like, what? You're like with him, with him? Like y'all engaged? And, and she was like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't get down like that. You know, I don't like him like that. So she told y'all who she was back in the 90s, mm. that she was not for uh, monogamy, that she liked to see lots of different men and did not take them seriously. And Arsenio Hall co-signed on it and said, yes, I know, that's who you are. We see you out there. So she said who she was and he knew who she was. I mean, if she said that on, on uh, worldwide nightly you know, evening talk show, she said who she was. Will Smith was a $20 million a movie actor. Jada Pinkett was not in that stratosphere. At the same time, there were rampant rumors and thought process about Will Smith's sexuality, which would have affected his ability to get some of those leading man Super action role. hero $20 million roles. So him marrying Jada solidified his masculinity. It was a and good her, look for him. Her marrying him, you know, got the acres. You know, there's, there's a lot of money involved with him. And I think now, 20 some years later, I think people's ideas about sexuality and acceptance of sexuality might be a lot. I know they're different than what they were in the 90s um, at that time. So that, that might not be as a, a bit of an issue for Will. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, Jada's got two kids by him and, and been married for so long. The money's going to be there at this point. If they broke up tomorrow, she's still immensely wealthy. But, you know, she, they're, they're, that wealth exists. So the reasons that may have caused them, and I'm speculating because, again, this is their relationship. I don't know. But from what it looks like is the reasons for them to get together once upon a time may not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Those reasons may not be there. So what, what then is binding them together? What, what, you know, so it's easy for to say, I was through with you. I don't want to mess with you no more. Because the reasons for them being together, and Jada's like, well, I do my red table talk on Facebook. I'll do this, and I'll do that, and I'll go shopping because I got money to burn, you know, in, in the situation. So the reasons for them being together that existed 27 years ago when she was on Arsenio, and, and thanks for bringing that up because I remember that interview when she said it. They don't exist anymore. So maybe that need for them to be in a relationship just doesn't, other than the fact that they now are the, up until maybe this point, were the representation of that couple that- They were black love. Like, they were black like, love. That's like how, ma how yeah, many they, rappers have you they heard- They can leave now. We got Jay and Beyonce. So right. Like, how many <laughs> rappers have you heard reference Will and Jada in Right. Life? Now, right. that they was were. Jay and Beyonce, but before, right. but like Will 10 years ago, it was Will and Jay. And that was, that's it. They were the example. When I said they were protecting the business at this point, that's what I meant. The business mm -hmm. of Will and Jay. The brand. The, the brand. The brand. The brand. I'm going to throw one more thing out there. I'm sorry, um, go ahead. Just, just as a person who went to a school for creative and performing arts in Cincinnati, I can tell you that if you've never gone to an art school, an arts high school, we live a little different. <laughs> we live a little different. And Jada went to an arts high school, you know, and we're exposed to a lot that most high school people, uh, and when I started in elementary school, I went from the fourth through the 12th grade. And I was there as a little kid with basically adult students. And sometimes I had classes that weren't my major, or weren't my, you know, uh, academic subjects with adult students. That's Dr. my Benton, little- I've been watching your face for a moment. <laughs> You've been looking very pensive. 
Well, I to make sure that if you had anything you wanted to add. I didn't. I was. I was worried that. Well, so I had this thought. <laughs> like I had many thoughts. I mean, the theater kid thing. We, we, you know, we get it. It's it's sort of part of the thing. But like I was. Were you a theater kid, do you? Yes. <laughs> That's why I was like, yeah, people did it. We did it. Okay, you know, you wear a cape to school, and you like, you know, whatever. But the, um. I guess I was actually trying to think about doing the anthropology thing. I was actually thinking about po polygamy, right? Like I work in a place in West Africa where it's very common to have multiple, not just multiple wives, but multiple partners. Um, and to some extent it works for people, but to some extent it does not, depending upon some of the, the norms, the cultural norms around partnership, oh, look at that. right? So it may, I mean, I don't want to get into too, too much detail about, about some of the folks that I knew, but it was, you know, very common for someone to say, well, yes, this is my wife and these are my girlfriends, or this is my husband and these are my boyfriends. But the idea is that there is a core and you keep, but you're, you're under, you have an understanding and the understanding is that you do not flaunt said outside relationships. So if your wife is going to be at such and such club, you don't show up with your girlfriend at that club. You go to another, you go to the club where people go with their girlfriend. <laughs> Saturday nights were for the wives, but Friday nights were for the girlfriend. Right, yeah. good <laughs> And so I kind of, I was trying to think about, mm. you know, like what, what kind of norms do we think about? Or the idea that, so I, my roommates, when I first moved to Sierra Leone were Nigerian uh, brother and sister who actually had different moms from, and, and their dad was married to multiple women. Mm. And there were two, there were women from different countries who had different businesses and they had, you know, and so dad was like, I married these women because that's part of my, tr my tradition. They're too much trouble. But I also married smartly. I married women who all have great jobs, handle their children. And so there's like a whole thing about the extent to which the, ch the children might be sort of jointly cared for, said women, by sometimes the younger woman, the younger wife. And there's the hierarchy in terms of the wives. Like the first wife has maybe the most powerful, whatever. Which isn't to say Jada and Will <laughs> had that kind of you know understanding, but there is that there are norms of that even under these circumstances that I think are, are more generalized. Um, and I guess shows that it could work, but under certain kinds of cultural norms and expectations, right? Um, I do know lots of people who actually were not happy with this arrangement. Like if you're the fourth wife, you don't, you don't love it. Cause you're usually, you're junior wife, which means you have to not only answer to a husband, you have to answer to like the other three wives, right? Or if you have multiple, this is so weird. I'm like, why am I? <laughs> if you're or if you have, if you're a, one of a woman who has multiple boyfriends, you kind of have to massage these different. You, you kind of have to say what it is that you're expecting from that. Is that guy's emotional support, or is that guy financial support? And they have to, and they're in that understanding. That's that's what it is. Get a dog if you need emotional support. Just get right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ultimate, and that's probably the better solution. Or but, I mean, or cat, I, cat after you which shirt. again, <laughs> it's not like I haven't seen these women fighting each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I haven't seen men fighting each other over these relationships. But I'm just saying that it's it's interesting like when i hear this stuff i go well how you know is this a, just our is this our cultural norm is this the thing that so when we start asking about the children is it because our norms they need the nuclear family to kind of to go point to, to like socially produce and reproduce do we, are we just you know is that is that just what our, our norm is which is also the reason that we find ourselves in places where we're like how do we make this marriage work instead of how do i make sure that i'm not sacrificing parts of myself. Mm -hmm. How am I not sacrificing, you know, um, it, because we're trying to also, uh, you know, kind of adhere to certain kinds of cultural and social norms about what we should be doing and how our family should look. I don't believe in social norms. <laughs> <laughs> but I you certainly... I, 
But you certainly did express some when you talked about how the children, how how will the children, like how will the children develop, right? Because there and is. Then, a yeah, and that was just my question to them. Like me personally, I would not have my children in that situation. Um, but if it, that's how I was asking, how does it work? I never got an answer from them, and that was my 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 question was question is how does this work with your children? Like, I wouldn't do it myself because I don't feel, your, feel like figuring out how to try to make it work. Um, but I do, I, you know, I just had this conversation with my husband about, um, you know, marriage as a whole. Like, I don't have children. I have cats, as you probably saw them crawling all over. Um, but just as far as like marriage goes in general, um, I was just telling my husband, like, I was not cut out to be, you know, a cookie cutter, like housewife. You know, especially if I'm working full time as well. And even if I wasn't working full time, I'm not the type of woman who wants to come home, make dinner, you know, clean house, do all these things, you know, like kind of bring home the bacon, fry it up in the pan, you know, and never let you forget your romance. I'm old, okay. Um, so, uh, but I'm not the, I'm not that person. Like, I don't want to spread myself too thin. And I think that every marriage, um, should try to figure out what's best for them in general instead of worrying about, um, okay, the white picket fence and do we have, you know, uh, two of this and a car and a... 2.2 2 children and... Yeah, yeah, point two. I think you need to figure out what works best for you and your partner and your personality types. And that could be something that Jay and Jada, uh, Jada and Will have tried to work out and figure out because it's something that I think all of us try to to figure out once we get into a relationship and I think a lot of people especially women um, we kind of hurt ourselves trying to do too much and be everything well look everybody we've been talking about this topic literally for about an hour and 15 minutes and I appreciate everybody for being a part if you want to continue the conversation, please go on social media, but please use the, the hashtag Think Tank 309 or Think Tank. And uh, we'll continue the conversation. And I want to thank everybody for being a part of it. We have one last topic that I want everyone to hear from everybody on and we get a little conversation. Uh, step back from Will and Jada a little bit and let's talk about uh, just in general, the one thing I wanted to discuss, because I've heard people talk about this, is the concept of work wives and work husbands and work spouses. Um, and I know that means different things to different people. I'm a single person and I've, and I've never been married. Um, I, I had a work wife, not at this job and not at the last job I had, but the job before that. Uh, and I think it was more funny. It was more of a joke than anything because we were in a, in a work circumstance working together. So then we became more husband than we've been. I mean, really, all it was was we, we would eat lunch and talk about work. I mean, that's really all it was. That it was. We talked about that's so to all of you, I, I told that boring story to tell us to say this. Is work, our work wives, uh, like, is that cool? Like, okay, let me ask this question. I'm gonna ask it to each of you. Everybody here is married except me. Do you have a work spouse? And does your spouse have a work spouse? And is it cool? That, I, I guess a, that's the question. I have a work wife. Um, <laughs> so. And what that means is that she and I both work in the same department. She's kind of the design creative where I'm the words creative. And in general, not even just in our approach to how we do our work, but how we view the corporate culture, like politically, we're just here, right? It's not sexual at all. But yeah. like, when I have a problem at work, whether I'm like in tears about something or I'm like a design problem, right? Like my go to. Right. Jokingly, she's not married or in any type of relationship. So, like, it's joking on both sides. My right. husband does not have a work wife because my husband doesn't talk, so he would have to talk. <laughs> but I think, right, in this sense, like, 
where she's giving me something I need at the office that isn't sexual, that isn't emotional per se. It's just like within that culture, we leave it there, right? After five, she's not my work wife. Like that, that's where it's left. So I think there's healthy ways to have those relationships that are, you know, but the problem comes when I think the attachment becomes super emotional. Like I don't go to Stephanie, my work wife, and talk about my marital problems. A lot of those ones that go astray in the work wife situation, because you're substituting that person for your therapist and you only know them in a vacuum and so they seem wonderful. You don't know who they are at home. And next thing you know, you're in town. So. <laughs> In previous employment situations, I had a work wife. My wife had a work husband. My wife knew my work wife. Um, and again, it was that emotional support that you might need at work in that work culture. So you're in a meeting and something is said that is obviously off track. I knew I could look at my work wife, she'd be looking at me, and we have that connection like, okay, that's some nonsense. We're gonna figure that out when the meeting's over. And then it was unspoken. So you have that kind of unspoken bond that you also have with your spouse. It exists that work with that person, but it ends when the work day ends. Because if it doesn't, then that's when you get into an entanglement, when, when work trips and conferences start up and those kind of things. And whether being involved in it or you've seen it, you see where that goes astray. But there were no, I could be listening to my wife talking about something at work. She could say this happened and more cousins in the room and we did it like worked out like this. I know, okay, great. That's the person that she has who's vibing with her at work about work things and I'm good with it. That's fine. He's not calling the house at seven at night to talk about what happened at work. So that's done when work is over. He's at his house, you at mine now. Um, so it can work. I, I think it's even healthy to work to have that person at work that you have that vibe and connection with the work things. It's, I think it's perfect. It's when you start mixing the circles. It's when the entanglement stuff. When you start talking about your home event. If I'm having a bad day at work because I've got home problems, my work life is not who I need to be talking about. I'm, I'm upset at work because I just found my wife was this, that, or other. My work life's not the person I should be talking to about that because that connection is there where it's going to be natural for her to want to be comforting. And I'm going to look at that comfort as something other than work comfort. And next thing you know, we will and Jada in August. I haven't no, had a work wife or a husband for, gosh, since like 2009 or something when I was at PNG. Uh, you know, so it's it's been it's been a long time. I guess you and I could have been. Well, wait, wait, wife. wait. That, that that was that was gonna be. <laughs> I was not your but, work husband. I don't think I was. I don't you believe like, I was. No, we we call each other media. Our you, I was your media wife. You're my media wife. My FI media wife. wife. Right. My media. I do remember that. I do remember yeah. that. <laughs> but do um, remember as far that. yeah, but I had like two people. Um, and I'm still very good friends with him. One of them, um, people that I work with at PNG, because I still do the same work that I did there. Um, one of them, uh, my friend Catherine, she's like my, my work wife, long distance. Even to this day, Catherine, if it's like, oh, what did we used to do? Or how do we do this? Or where do I find that again? Like I could email Catherine and she'll shoot me, you know, some information that I need um, to get some work done. So it's, and they are people that, you know, I see outside of work, but not um, in kind of, any kind of intimate setting, just the way we might have brunch together or we might go have dinner together just to catch up because we all live different places now. So if we're all in Cincinnati, you know, we all try to catch up. I do not have a work husband or work wife now, but I did have a work husband roughly about, this is 2020, Maybe 2016, 2015, 2016, when I used to work out of the office, I'm fully remote now. And uh, this particular individual was, uh, I referred to him as my work husband because he was there for technical and emotional support for work-related issues. So I worked a very, very, um, or let's just say I received a lot of racial issues at the previous employer that I worked at. So that, that particular person there for 
uh, for those issues because you can't just have those type of conversations with everyone. But he, if he's there to witness a particular uh, such such like what you said, Demetrius, in a meeting where, where something is said and you kind of look over to that person like you know what is what's going on. That was the supportive person. However, after Kevin and I were talking about this production, he made me kind of change my perspective on the actual title, Work Husband and Work Wife. Even though I don't have one, I kind of get in a different light. So I hate to bring that up, but maybe, I don't know if you even want to touch on it, Kevin, but um, his perspective, and I, I want to speak for him, but the way I received his perspective was, hold on, I, I'm at home and I have, or I'll use myself as an example. I'm married to my husband and he's at work and there is another individual at work calling him their husband. He's like, hold on, that hold on, that you need it, you need to assume a different title because he only has right. one wife. And the and the way that Kevin explained it as is as if it's that it can come off a bit I don't wanna use the term disrespectful. All I'm but, saying is um, is if and Demetrius, I don't know your wife's name. I've never met your wife. Oh, Michelle, yeah. But like, if I work with Michelle and I say, oh, Michelle, you're real cool. I want to be her work husband. And then we at the company picnic eating potato right. salad with raisins in it. And then um, I go and I say, oh, this is Demetrius. This is your real, like, that's odd, and that's maybe it's my insecurity. My, no, and I'll, and I'll no, digest that. If that's no, case. my work wife would never call herself my work wife, right? And right. never in the presence of my wife would she right. say I'm okay. work wife. So when we're at that business thing at that holiday dinner or whatever, then it's this is your wife, and my wife might say, "Oh, that's your work wife." She right. may assign that title because she knows. She knew who Andrea was, I'll say her name. She right. knew who Andrea was. So she like, oh, that's your work wife. And and it was it was yeah, everyone knew that. It wasn't even at the job knew that. But there was a definite Becky, you're muted. Uh, you're muted. I'll unmute you. Hold on. I wanna push back at you though, because the way that you're I think interpreting this is there's a lot more presumption involved on your end, I think, as you see this type of relationship than there is because it's like what Demetrius said it's like a informal right it's like a thing you do at the work day no one's going around like this is my work wife here meet my work husband like I think that you're interpreting this because perhaps you've been out of the relationship game (laughs) (laughs) wow Wow. (laughs) Uh, uh, (laughs) he's coming in with the I'm just just saying just, just throw his hand right in the square of my forehead. Wow. I, I just met Ron. I Ron. love it. Go ahead. I think there's some more presumption involved in the way <laughs> that actually is. Push back. We've known each other a long time. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. I'm laughing. Okay, but I do you exactly. But uh, he's right and you're right both, on both of those things. There still has to be that level that of respect that exists that I would never, like, if I was somewhere and there was a birthday party and my work wife's boyfriend or man was there, I'm never, like, moving in and assuming some role or position because I'm her work husband. That's That's your guy. I'm never going to impose that because that's not where we're at. Now we'll get to work. Then that's the role I play because we help each other out in that in that area or that emotional support at work for each other. But in a non-work setting, it should never be where that work husband or work wife feels they have any, any they have any they, they, they have they have right. no they have no position in no that. And if they do, mm-hmm. if they do, then now we're getting into the entanglements. If they have that presumption, <laughs> we got a problem. That that's where it's gone too far where it can be an emotional entanglement. And they, 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 like Tiffany was saying, it doesn't have to be physical, but if that presumption exists, then there's an emotional entanglement there. Mm-hmm. If I'm mm-hmm. trying to get to work to see my work wife instead of to get to work, mm-hmm. that's a problem. You know, if, if that becomes the issue, then there's an entanglement. I didn't look forward to going to work to see my work wife. I look forward to going to work to do my job. So that and that's back home. so I can get back home and have the money to take care of my wife. Not that I'm trying to get to work to see my work wife 
because that's where the emotional entanglement gets involved. Well, so, I don't work. I mean, the situation I work in does not really fully allow for such things. And even when I did work in in, the, in a situation, I didn't. I mean, I think maybe it's probably more uh, appropriate for my spouse who actually has to spend a lot of time outside of work <laughs> talking to the what they call the partners um, in the surgery thing that he does. So I, but I, honestly. What if my objection to the idea of work wife work husband is I don't even like to think of work <laughs> like family. <laughs> like I just I just I'm just like no nah, I can't hear. So I may have good friends who I'm like did you hear that shit? Or I actually have been. I probably shouldn't do this where I'm like I've been in meetings where I'm like she did not just say this. Right. Right. I've sent the wrong text a few or, times. Like, or or right. right. Or doc <laughs> documenting the the shit that is going down. Start a part of my friend, but the, but but I won't. But I don't want to like even imagine that my work relationships at all look like familial ones because then you start talking about responsibilities to the corporation or something, and I I don't want to do that. So that's kind of like. I kind of push against it in that way, which isn't, again, but I do have these friends with whom I have connections, usually around the concerns of, you know, about the stuff that they say, somebody said, about the thing that I need to get pat, pushed through administration, about all of these other things, the people that I can count on for to get that thing done. But, you know, I kind of want that to be a space where I don't have to think about the possibility mm. of family, <laughs> um, but that, but that again, that's that's me because I keep, you know, because maybe it's also because I'm now sitting in the pandemic when you're, you know, they send out those letters. Right. Oh, we we support you. <laughs> We're here for, you know, we care about you, and you're like, you don't. You'll the, if you, the second you need to cut a budget line, a line in your budget, Facts. you'll be so willing to drop me. Facts. So I don't even, you know, it's like. Y'all, one of the best conversations, Tiffany and I predicted that this was gonna be one of the best conversations and it, it was best, one of the best conversations when we were talking about this episode and by all <laughs> means, it definitely was. So I wanna thank everybody for being a part. This is this is not the Eric 309. This is Think Tank 309. We're talking about entanglements. Thank you for watching, please. Thank you.